welcome to wings of arrow advanced education and versus organization to know more visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.tv today my topic is flow over and thin airfoil and this video will be having a layout of kutta condition kutta jacuzzi theorem kelvin circulation theorem thin airfoil theory and leading edge and trailing edge stall so first i will come with kutta conditions it the kutta conditions have three conditions the first one is the the value of circulation along the airfoil is such that the flow leaves the trailing edge smoothly as you can see the airfoil how the flow leaving from the trailing edge second condition if the trailing edge angle is finite then the trailing edge is in stagnation point so you can see as a figure displayed in your screen it having a finite angle which having a velocity of v lower and v upper so both the velocity will coincide and they will equal to zero for finite angle of the trailing edge so if you calculate if you apply on the bernoulli's equation you can find that the trailing edge at the pressure at the trailing edge is equivalent to the total pressure that is the trailing edge is a stagnation point the next one comes if the trailing edge is cupped then the velocity leaves the top and the bottom surface of the trailing edge are finite and equal that means the velocity on the upper and the velocity on the lower will be same but they are doesn't mean they are equal to zero but in kutta condition says the vortices at the trailing edge are zero now comes kelvin circulation theorem in kelvin circulation theorem it states that the time rate of change of circulation around a closed curve consists the same fluid element is zero that means the change in circulation with respect to change in time will be zero as you have to remember this is in kelvin circulation theorem next comes kutta jacuzzi theorem this kutta jacuzzi theorem is applicable for second dimension so in second dimension it states that in the lift per span is directly proportional to the circulation along the closed section so it can be written as l prime equals to density velocity and the circulation classical thin airfoil theory this categorize the how the vortices are over the camber line and the camber line becomes a streamline because we are considering a thin airfoil then we will apply a kutta conditions on that particular equation then we will calculate the circulation around the airfoil then we'll calculate the lift through the kutta jacuzzi theorem here comes a few assumptions here when we are considering a thin airfoil theory we are considering a two dimensional flow is good in viscid means when there is no viscosity in the fluid next comes incompressible flow <coughs> incompressible flow denotes uh, when the density is constant irrotational flow there is no angular moment occurring on the flow and small alpha that is small angle of attack and the thickness to core ratio of an airfoil is considered to be very small here comes first as a figure represent or displayed on your screen represents a chord line as you can see and the camber line so over uh, each segments of a camber line you can see a vortices is forming and a free stream velocity is projected and inclination of alpha and the v infinity now we can form an equations over the streamline the camber line is considered to be an streamline now from there that conditions we can write that the velocity normal plus the velocity on the camber line will subject to zero now what is vortex 
From their general equation, we can know that the velocity induced by a small section of a vortex is minus gamma ds 2 pi r. Now this formula will be applied over here. See as the figure represents. Now from here we can write this equation. This is a fundamental equation of a thin air foil theory. This now comes center of pressure. In center of pressure, it's a point at which the aerodynamic moment is zero. For a symmetric airfoil, we consider the formula is C by 4, that is 25 percentage of the chord. Similarly, but aerodynamic center is a point at which the aerodynamic movement is independent of angle of attack. So what is the basic difference between center of pressure and aerodynamic center? Angle of attack increases the center of aerodynamic center won't be shifting. It is a constant but in the center of pressure by increasing the angle of attack the center of point location will be changed. But when the aerodynamic moment is zero, the foreign symmetric airfoil, the location is 25% of the chord. Here comes the leading edge stall and the trailing edge stall. The basic understanding of the leading edge stall and the trailing edge stall is about the difference in the thickness. But camber remains the same. The shape of a mean camber line are same but the thickness are different as in my previous lecture i have described about the naka series the four dg series you can go and refer back the link is in the description below so where you can see the graph and you can predict that the thin airfoil and what is happening in the camber airfoil in the same thing if you compare you can see the leading edge stall that is of magnum that is the naka series of 4412 and in the trailing edge stall is naka 4421 so the leading edge stall provides a maximum lift whereas the trailing edge stall produce a soft stall and please make a note of it in case of leading edge stall the thickness ranges from 10% to 16% of the cord whereas in the Naka 4421 that is a trailing edge stall it ranges more than 20% of the thickness to core ratio Thank you for watching this video. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail wingsofarrow at the rate gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. For the time being, take care, stay blessed, inspired and fly high.